at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi there, good morning. It is Friday, June 23rd. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. And we're going to talk about all things Wimby in just a minute. But for now, we're going to talk about the weather he'll expect when he gets here to San when Antonio. When he gets here today, we are all on cloud nine. Speaking of clouds. Yeah, guys, <laughs> it's going to be hot today for yeah. Wimby. It's going to be hot for all of us. You know, yesterday we had a little bit of a reprieve with some of the rain, uh, but that is not going to be the case today or honestly for a long period of time. 82 degrees outside right now. Heat index already close to 90. We've got that stout wind from the east southwest east southeast rather pulling in that Gulf of Mexico moisture dew points are high and this is a look at the forecast highs and the heat index this afternoon we're going to get to 100 in San Antonio but it'll feel closer to 110 getting up to 97 in Seguin feeling like 109 even up in the hill country 98 feeling like 105 so real deal heat returns today and is with us for an extended period of time at least the pollen count looks better than yesterday yesterday molds were high today molds are down they're moderate at 510. Pigweed is low. Coming up in the forecast, that heat high going to be moving directly overhead for your weekend. But there is a glimmer of some hope as far as good news goes in the forecast. So I'll give you those details in just a bit. For now, though, let's check in with Stephen Cavazos. How are the roads looking, Stephen? Sarah, things are pretty cool over here. Thankfully, I have not spotted major issues out on the roadways. In fact, our Friday morning commute has been off to a good start. Let's get a quick look around town. 10 at Hackberry, you can see the east and westbound lanes don't have a lot of folks out there, but maybe a little bit busier here at I-10 West at West Avenue. Again, not spotted major issues out on the roadways. We did have some minor crashes that were reported already cleared out, and what we're looking at is just some of the residual effects from this closure. This is day five of this closure at I-35 Southbound Upper Level. That exit to Brooklyn Avenue has been closed, and this is all stemming from a fire that occurred Sunday night at a homeless encampment. This is according, this is according to the San Antonio Fire Department. That fire actually spread into the water drainage system, which is actually built right underneath the highway, which made it difficult for first responders to get to. Again, I'll keep this in mind. This happened Sunday night. It led to a closure early Monday morning, but it has since reopened. The only thing that has not reopened is that exit to Brooklyn Avenue. So it's been like that for five days now, and it's likely because crews are still testing the integrity of the structure and want to know the extent of the damage. So keep that in mind. If you have to travel through there, we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown buildup. But other than that, just minor slowdowns, lots of construction, as you can always expect to see here in the Alamo City. But just scan the QR code that takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. We have a full list of all the current closures. We'll get that information for you. There you go. It takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. All the closures that are happening throughout the weekend. We'll have more on that, of course, on air and online. Guys. Stephen, thank you very much. Well, like many of you, we were at home last night watching Wimby Mania unfold in full force at the AT&T Center. Part of our team coverage last night was our very own David Sears was at the AT&T Center checking out the fan shop. And David Sears, nice enough to join us from home live this morning. Thanks, David. Hi, David. Have you come down off that high yet? <laughs> yeah, I got a Wimby Yama hangover. <laughs> 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 it was uh, it was it was quite the evening at the AT and T Center. It's been a long time since we've seen this much enthusiasm from fans. The place was probably half to three quarters full, and they were pumped up. They stood in line. Fans stood in line for like two hours. Wow. Thank goodness it wasn't over hundred degrees yesterday. And then they rushed in for fifteen minutes of television. It was absolutely amazing. The place was pandemonium when they announced that Victor Wimbanyama was going to be a San Antonio Spurs. It, it was just an awesome night to see these fans come out and enjoy the evening. You know, I, I saw you talk to some people out there. Were there people getting emotional um, when, you know, they were watching this happen as well? They, I mean, I know Victor did. Yeah, Victor got a little emotional. Yeah, they, I mean, they were emotional in more of a form of, of being excited. And, you know, one other thing that I, that I noticed, a lot of kids, parents brought their kids. Of course, the parents grew up with Tim Duncan and they grew up with David Robinson and they only know winning. And so now they bring in their kids out. We've had some lean years and there there's, there's Victor talking last night and that's his sister and his brother sitting there and, and they got emotional. I think when the fans saw that they got a little emotional knowing that their kids get to grow up with him. They get to learn what learning, what winning is all the time. Like, like we did and like they did as, as parents. So it was, it was quite the, I, I love, I love this picture right here when he hugs his, he hugs his sister and his brother, oh, his yeah. parents were there. But he let his sister and brother come up with him on the podium, wiping his eyes. Wait till he gets to San Antonio and sees all the fans. I mean, what a great moment right there. That 
will last forever for him and his family because that that was just that was awesome to see you know he knew he was going to go first he knew he was going to the spurs but yet he still had that emotion last night when he got picked and that's 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 that humility from this young man what what a great what a great young man he is we love to see that. We I, did. I, I feel like we, uh, Mark and I were talking about it this morning. It makes us happy as fans to see that because, you know, he really wants to be here. You know, what more can we ask for? He's super talented and he wants to be here as yeah. well. Yeah, David, let yeah. me ask you this real quick. Um, okay. Did you still have your heart in your throat for a millisecond last night before they officially <laughs> announced his name? You know, I, I'll tell you, we were standing outside the fan shop. And we saw him, I can tell this to you now, we saw him kind of loading up the jerseys. You never saw the back of the jerseys, but you saw the front. It said number one and went, I, it's good. Okay, good. <laughs> we're, all, we're all good. And then the fans just stormed the fan shop after it was announced to start buying up the Wimbenyama jerseys. You will probably see those starting, oh, this afternoon, all around San Antonio. So it's, it, it's going to be pretty exciting. And you were talking about how excited he was. Here he was at a post game or post game post draft <laughs> uh, interview in on the on the podium. He did a ton of these last night, but but here he was. Here's a little bit of what he had to say about coming to San Antonio. I'm gonna give 100, percent make every, all 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 that's in my power to to make franchise win. You know, to have impact on the franchise and the fan base and the community. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to wear my first my first Spurs jersey. You know, it's uh, yeah, I, I just can't wait. It's gonna be such. It's the start of a, such great adventure, and we, we never know what's gonna happen. And uh, this is what's exciting, you know. Hey, David. So real go quick, thing, go, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I was gonna say there were a couple other picks last night, and I want to get to those guys too because yeah. I, I don't want them to get lost in the shuffle, but there were two, two second rounders. Okay, the, the Spurs had a 33rd pick, and they picked Leonard Miller, but then they traded him to the T-Wolves for, guess what? A couple of draft picks in the second round in the future. Ooh, That's, they need more draft picks. Right. And then, of course, C.D. is uh, was played in France for a, a lot of years, and then he came over and played in the G League. He was with the uh, Ignite of the G League, so the Spurs got him with the 44th pick. And then they'll be signing more guys as the days go on, as they get ready for their uh, for their summer camp in California and again in Las Vegas coming up in a week or so. And, yes, Victor said he will be a part of those summer camps, so that's going to be fun. Yes. Can't wait. And, hey, David, yeah. I was watching your, your coverage last night. You were with RJ and you were talking with Larry, and I heard something that you were promising the fans – do you remember? Hey, when the Spurs win the championship next, I think all three of us should get the Wimby cut, right? I, I'll do it. I'll Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Yeah. Thank you, guys, Let's bring for that your time. Championship home. All right. Be safe up there. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you for your time. Are you going to get that Wimby cut? I said, if they win a if, if he wins a championship, part of a championship team in San Antonio, I will get the Wimby cut. Okay. okay. You. But, but see, here's the key. Here's the, it's on the back of your head. So, yeah. you know, I'm going to have to turn around for you to see it. And, I, and I'm losing hair back there, so there may not be that much to cut. So, okay, you know. so you, RJ, and Larry. we and have all three. We have it on record yep. right there. I look forward to the idea of having this conversation and actually fulfilling that bet <laughs> one day, David. I, I'll be more than happy to do it. That would be cool. Be fun. Amen. <laughs> And the excitement <laughs> continues. It does. Oh, so fun to talk about. David, I'm glad you were there last night uh, for that history, history making night for our Spurs yep. yet again. No, I was, yeah, it was beautiful. Haven't seen anything like that since they won the championship in, uh, in 14. So it was fun to see the fans yeah. come out. And I, w real quick, I know that all these other teams go, oh, we got the best fans in the world. No, you don't. San Antonio has the best fans in the entire world because they have a fan base that's worldwide. Nobody else has a fan base like San Antonio all across the country and all across the nation. Now more in France. So we have the best fans in the world. Yes, we do. So yes, exciting. we do. Go Spurs, go. David, thanks for checking in from home. All right. Have a good weekend. Go Spurs, go. Yes. All right, one thing not going today, folks. Oh, yeah. Big problems with TxDOT and their Department of Motor Vehicles Division. We wanted to let you know this is kind of a big deal today. We just got an update. This is on the Texas DMV mm -hmm. Facebook page, an alert just sent out for today that all the Texas DMV systems are down at this time, affecting all online and in-person vehicle-related services, including 
county tax offices and other registration renewal locations, uh, and that includes a number of different places. Yeah, we're talking about grocery stores, title offices, vehicle dealerships, and specialty license plate purchases. So this is all 16 Texas DMV regional service centers closed today because of this. And we don't know what happened. We don't know when their systems will be back up. But again, if you had an appointment today with Texas DMV, you are out of luck right now due to some system wide out as they're all down on this day, Friday, June 23rd. They want to note, though, that driver's license services are provided by the Texas Department of Public Safety, not Texas DMV. So that should be up and running. Okay, so we just wanted to let you know, do our due diligence here at KSAT. All right, for now, let's look at today's Night at Nine. The Coast Guard is announcing search crews have found five pieces of the missing sub nearly a third of a mile from the Titanic. The five passengers are presumed dead. Experts say a fault in the sub structure may have led to an implosion due to the intense pressure at that depth. The Coast Guard says recovering the crew members remains won't be possible. A hearing is underway to understand what went wrong in the Ohio train derailment back in February. Investigators are revealing the train engineer raised concerns about the size of the 150 car train, but was allegedly ignored by the train manager. Later today, the hearing will focus on safety measures along the tracks. However, it could take another year to finish the investigation. I-95 northbound reopening today in Philadelphia with temporary lanes after a partial collapse this month. Construction crews work 24-7 to repair the overpass. The Department of Transportation is providing $3 million in emergency relief funds. Neighboring states also pitched in to help detour traffic and even workers from NASCAR helped by drying the pavement for striping. New trouble for Hannah Gutierrez Reed, the armorer of the Alec Baldwin movie Rust, where a deadly shooting occurred. She already faces an involuntary manslaughter charge, and now she's accused of tampering with evidence. Gutierrez Reed's lawyer says she's planning to plead not guilty to both the involuntary manslaughter and the evidence tampering charge. Texas State Senator Angela Paxton, the wife of Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, will no longer be able to vote in his upcoming impeachment trial. This is because the Senate adopted new rules that include banning spouses of members who are on trial from voting. She had previously vowed to carry out her duties and not recuse herself from voting. A bipartisan bill that would give the president more power to prepare for the next pandemic is being introduced to Congress. The new legislation hopes to target issues that came to light during the COVID-19 pandemic, mainly U.S. supply issues that caused a shortage for masks, respirators, and other supplies. The bill would give power to the White House to negotiate trade deals on medical goods and services, trusted trade partners. The USDA says Sunrise Growers is recalling frozen fruit products over possible listeria contamination. The products were being sold at Walmart, Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, and Target under the store's own labels. They were distributed between the fall of 2022 and this week. The FDA is saying if you still have these products, throw them away or return them to the store for a full refund. U.S. home prices dropped last month by the largest annual amount in more than a decade. According to a National Association of Realtors report, the median existing home price was just over $396,000 in May. Sales of existing homes were up to 2% from April to May, but down more than 20% from a year ago. Experts say that surge has resulted in new home sales reaching pre-pandemic levels. Victor Winbenyama is heading to the Alamo City. Fans erupted at the AT&T Center as his name was called at the NBA draft last night. The 19-year-old is expected to become the league's newest superstar. This is the third time the Spurs have won the NBA draft lottery and earned the right to pick number one alongside David Robinson and Tim Duncan. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Busy morning, 9, 12, 81 degrees. And coming up on GMSA at 9, a local high school student got a cool opportunity to showcase an app he created at a competition organized by Apple. So after the break, Tiffany Huetos is going to tell us more about how his app and how it works. 915, welcome back. A local high school student with a passion for technology, coding, and problem solving recently competed in a coding competition created by a giant tech company we all know very well. 
Yes, we do. Tiffany Huertas joins us in the studio to tell us what other opportunities this competition led to the teen, too. Good morning. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Smithson Valley High School student Nathaniel Suarez participated in a competition organized by Apple, which led him to meet tech leaders from across the world. Now, Suarez participated in the Swift Student Challenge, where the company Apple challenges students to create an original app using the Apple's Swift coding language. Now, the teen created an innovative app and it called Grocery Math. It blends math and American Sign Language by offering subtraction problems and allowing users to input answers through ASL hand signs. So once you find your answer, it's two. Um, you could put your answer in there. Now, Nathaniel was also invited to attend the Apple Worldwide Developers Conference, where he met with developers from across the world and saw the latest technologies. Now, he is going into senior year, and when he graduates, he hopes to study computer science at UT Austin and his dream job to work at Apple. That's awesome. I think he already has his foot in the door. Yes, and it just goes to show you how STEM and all of these educational tools that are provided in schools, how it helps these students in so many ways. Thank you. Tiffany. Agreed. Tiffany, thank you. And let's look out there with live cam. 81 degrees. We know it's going to creep up to a hot weekend, Sarah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as I mentioned yesterday, we had a little bit of rain that helped us out just a smidge, but no rain in the forecast today. I do want to put things in perspective, though. Everybody remembers last year's summer. We had almost the record amount of triple digit days in a year. By this time last year, we had had 19 100 degree days with the hottest temperature being 105 this year. Don't get me wrong, it has been very hot. In fact, unusually hot this early and humid, but we have only had five days of 100 degree weather. So comparison there, five compared to 19. We did, however, reach 105 or earlier this week in San Antonio. And looking ahead, I mean, we're gonna add on to that tally by at least five to seven in the next seven days. And looking at those highs, temperatures climbing up into the uh, 102 to 104 degree range by early next Next week, we're going to be running some 10 degrees above the average high this time of year, which is about 93. And the reason for that is that heat high is going to move directly overhead. Here's a look at the weather setup right now. You can see <coughs> some thunderstorms from the panhandle down to Dallas, Fort Worth. Now, this is because there is a that heat high on the east side has allowed for showers and storms to develop, much like yesterday. But that heat high is going to be moving directly overhead, and our high temperatures are only going to climb from here on out. In fact, that heat high will be directly over San Antonio and South Central Texas by Tuesday of next week. And it really isn't until Friday, Saturday that we see that heat high move enough off to the east to relieve those high, uh, hot high temperatures just a little bit. But still, I mean, I'm kind of grasping at straws to find something positive in the forecast. But this is one thing. The humidity is going to come down uh, as that heat high moves overhead. So it's oppressively humid outside. But by about Monday, Tuesday of next week in the afternoon during the peak heat of the day, we're not going to have a heat index value. So it'll feel hot, don't get me wrong, but not as humid in the middle of next week. Outside right now, it is 82 degrees. We do have some morning clouds out there, but those clouds are starting to burn off. We've got east southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. Here's a look at those clouds starting to uh, dissipate around San Antonio. It's still fairly cloudy up in Kendall County, and the longer these clouds stick around, the lower that afternoon high temperature is going to be, but it's still going to be hot. Uh, again, starting to see mostly sunny skies. It's 82 in San Antonio. 79 in Rio Medina, 77 in Bernie, 78 in Kerrville, and 81 in New Braunfels. Here's your KSAT 12-hour forecast for the day. Partly cloudy by noon, 90 degrees, 94 by 1 p.m. with already a heat index of 102. And then in the afternoon, we'll reach 100 degrees. Peak heat index close to 110 today. Southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Even by 9 o'clock, we'll still have a heat index. It'll still feel like it's close to 100 degrees. Here's a look at the peak forecast.
forecast heat index for your neighborhoods. 109 in Castroville, 108 in Divine, 109 in Seguin, 105 in Bulverde. It'll be 104 in Kerrville. At least that's what it'll feel like out there. And you can take today's forecast and copy and paste it into the weekend. So find a way to stay cool, perhaps by a pool. 101 Saturday, 102 Sunday, feeling closer to 108. And again, a hot forecast for us, but at least the humidity will be coming down next week. So we can say at least it's a dry heat. We'll be back with more news after the break. Nine twenty four, three San Antonio police officers had say they had no choice but to shoot and kill a woman overnight. This happened after a reported disturbance at the woman's apartment complex near Old Pierce Hall Road and Loop 410. As Katrina Weber tells us, it's still unclear what made the officers feel threatened. The police chief William McManus was out here this morning, but did not have a whole lot of immediate answers. He says he expects to know more once he has a chance to interview those officers at length and also review their body camera video. Uh, we still don't know whether the woman who was killed actually had any weapons on her, but the chief says the three officers all fired their weapons. He says this started around 2 this morning, initially with a call that firefighters answered. They reported that the woman was either tampering with or destroying her fire alarm. McManus says that firefighters eventually backed off of the situation, and when officers showed up, he says things continued going downhill. Disturbance continued, and at some point, again, this is very sketchy, I'm telling you just what I know, at some point, uh, three officers fired at the woman. The woman died here at the scene. The only information we have about her is that she was in her early 40s and apparently lived here at the Rosemont at Miller's Pond Apartments. The chief says the officers were two, five, and 14-year veteran, veterans. And again, he says that this account is just preliminary. He says that he does need to uh, talk to those officers at length and review the, the, the video from their body cameras, as well as talk to any possible witnesses to the situation. Reporting from the southwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 925, 82 degrees. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including the latest on the Titanic submersible tragedy and what some believe went wrong before they even set sail. Well, as you may know by now, a heartbreaking ending to the search for the Titanic-bound submersible. The U.S. Coast Guard saying debris found during their search was consistent with a, quote, catastrophic implosion. All the passengers are presumed dead, but many questions remain about what went wrong after the sub launched on Sunday morning. CNN's Gloria Pasmino is in Newfoundland with what crews uncovered and reaction from the passengers' family members. And we've learned from sources here on the ground that the Polar Prince, which was operating as the missing vessel's mothership, is expected to arrive back into the harbor here, likely later this evening or tomorrow morning. This after they spent days trying to rescue and find the missing vessel. The, the, debris, the debris was found not far from the bow of the Titanic, a sign that their expedition had reached its intended destination. But this is a two mile below sea level, an environment that is unforgiving where humans can survive and the prospects, the prospects of recovery are unlikely. An adventure of a lifetime ending in tragedy. All five passengers on board the Titanic bound submersible were killed. I offer my deepest condolences to the families. After a five-day search, debris from the sub, known as the Titan, was found about 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic, deep in the North Atlantic Ocean. The debris is consistent with a catastrophic uh, implosion. Those who knew the five passengers are grappling with their loss. He meant so much. He was so caring. An incredible sense of humor, too. Paul-Henri Narjolet was a French diver with decades of experience exploring the Titanic. British citizens Shasada Daywood and his 19-year-old son Suleiman were also on board along with Hamish Harding, a British businessman who went on several extreme expeditions. And the man behind OceanGate, CEO Stockton Rush, who co-founded the submersible service company in 2009. I'd like to be remembered as an innovator. The vessel lost contact an hour and 45 minutes after launching Sunday morning from St. John's, New Newfoundland. The U.S. Navy now saying it detected an implosion in the water Sunday and notified rescuers. But many questions remain about the safety of touring the Titanic's wreckage, which rests about 13,000 feet below the ocean's surface, twice the depth of the Grand Canyon. The 
pretty much everybody involved understood the risks. And despite being aware of that risk, the focus over the next several days will be to try and understand, figure out exactly how this happened, why it happened, and if the company could have done anything to prevent it. The ocean exploring community say they need to know that in order to successfully move forward. Reporting from Newfoundland, Gloria Pasmino, back to you. Well, in other news, more layoffs on the horizon for Ford. They are expected to affect salaried workers in the U.S. and could be formally announced as soon as next week. Ford laid off about 3,000 people last August. Bed Bath & Beyond may be in the middle of closing down its stores, but the name could live on. Overstock.com has won an auction at $21.5 million. Bed Bath & Beyond filed for bankruptcy in April after several turnaround plans failed. Let's go outside with live cam. You know what? We had avoided the extreme heat, it seemed like, for longer than usual, and now it has definitely settled in for the long bake. Exactly, exactly. And in the next several days are going to be seeing temperatures well above the triple digits. So I just wanted to remind everyone, please take care of your pups, uh, especially if you plan on walking your dog today. Know that uh, just like this wonderful picture sent in by our KSAT viewers on our KSAT Connect feature, uh, they do love those little kitty pulls sometimes. If you want to send in pictures of your pups, you can scan that QR code. It'll take you to our KSAT Connect. Uh, but as you take a look at the forecast for the day today, Try to avoid walking the dog during the peak heat of the day. That's uh, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. In the heat index today, it's going to be close to 110. That affects pups, too, in addition to us. But otherwise, it's going to be hot, high near 100, mostly sunny skies. No real rain to help us cool down. And looking ahead to the weekend as well, find a pool. Find a way to stay cool if you're going to be outside. 101 Saturday, 102 Sunday. Heat index will make it feel like 108. And by the way, the UV index is is going to be extreme this weekend to mostly sunny skies so skin damage time within about 10 minutes use that sunscreen here's what we're going to talk about in the forecast but by rain zero percent chance for rain in the coming days as that heat high moves overhead also though there is a slight uh, silver lining here we are going to have lower humidity early next week as that heat high moves overhead uh, that means no heat index and we'll take a quick check of the tropics tropical storms brett and cindy are actually in the Atlantic right now. I'll tell you where those storms are headed and how strong they'll get coming up in just a bit. Mark, Steph. For dozens of young NBA hopefuls last night. And this morning we now have a fresh wave of young basketball stars. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has a recap of last night's NBA draft. For Webb Anyama, now a San Antonio Spur, he's just hoping to find some tacos. Breakfast tacos. <laughs> nah. I heard a lot about breakfast tacos. Spurs fanatics like ESPN's Marty Smith hosting a draft watch party at their arena all in on Web Bond Mania. San Antonio is now Web Antonio. While Vic as top pick was never in doubt, the rest of the draft was filled with plenty of surprises, upsets, and a little history. The Thompson brothers, Amen and Asar, became the highest picked brothers at number four and five overall. They also happen to be identical twins. The Houston Rockets select Amen Thompson. Piston select Asar Thompson. And Scoot Henderson, believed by many to be a number one overall pick in any other year that doesn't feature a once in a generation French phenom, slipped to number three overall, hoping to blaze his own trail for the Portland Trailblazers. They get a dog. They get a dog that's going to come in and that's going to be hungry. No, I'm young, but I got I got a mature mindset, and, and, and that's to work, and, and that's to come in and make a real impact, and, and not just the basketball side, but the, in the community, you know. So they, they getting a special player, a special person. But the real winner, as always, was the fashion, and this year didn't disappoint. I see pink is in the house. Visible from outer space, Grady Dick showed the world he's not in Kansas anymore with this bedazzled ode to the Wizard of Oz. Dorothy has her little slippers. I got my Dorothy suit. It was the right choice, too. He was picked by the Toronto Raptors, who sport the color red with less shine, we hope. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. The first Wemby Spurs jersey was revealed last night, and some fans waited hours just to get their hands on one. RJ Marcus was in the middle of the excitement and gives us a look at the Wemby merchandise and merch mania, which proves that only people more excited than Wemby playing for the Spurs are the diehard Spurs fans. Wemby, 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 Wemby. 
These Spurs fans waited in line for hours for this moment. A first look at the official Spurs jersey with Victor Wembanyama's name on the back. I came to the draft party, but after I, the main reason I came was to get the jersey, and I'm I'm just so excited. Colby Parker was first in line to get his hands on the Wemby jersey in silver and black. He described what it means for Spurs Nation. Hope for Spurs fans. Hope that we can possibly get back to that championship level. Parker was one of thousands of fans who rushed the Spurs Pro Shop to pick up Wemby merchandise. It's been amazing to see the reaction that fans have had, just to feel the excitement. It is truly palpable. Spurs officials say they have been stocking up for draft night the moment the team won the lottery. This is a unique situation. Um, this is one of, you know, one of the most talked about drafts in the history of the NBA draft. Um, but I do think we're going to be okay on inventory. And with Wemby Mania just starting in San Antonio, they are ready to meet the demand. We are expecting a high volume of folks to, to want to be here and, and to want to get jerseys and merchandise. I've never seen anything like this, but I've also never experienced the love of a fan base like Spurs fans have for their team. That was our RJ Marquez reporting. By the way, those uh, Spurs jerseys, those Wimby jerseys, mm -hmm. they're priced at $150. Yeah, well, it's, it's an investment. It is right? an investment, yes, <laughs> investment especially piece. with such a, a young talent arriving on our squad. Can't wait. Yeah, super exciting. We do have an update for you or just a reminder that the Texas DMV systems are down this morning. That's right. It's affecting all online and in-person vehicle related services. We're reading it off our phones because it was posted on the Texas DMV Facebook page this morning. So this affects systems at county tax offices and other registration renewal locations such as grocery stores, title offices, vehicle dealerships and specialty license plate purchases. So all 16 Texas DMV regional service centers are closed today and they tell us that the updates will be provided on their Facebook page when they get more information about it. Kind of a big deal. Just wanted to let you know once again, 938, 82 degrees. You're watching GMSA at nine and summer is heating up and we're featuring our summer camp in our series. It's a local nonprofit camp that's dedicated to helping kids with developmental delays. As we go to break here, look at some of the activities going on at public libraries around the city today at 2 p.m. Kids 6 to 12 years old can practice reading out loud by reading to a therapy dog at Thousand Oaks Branch Library. How adorable is that? And then at 4 p.m., the Lego Club getting together at Memorial Branch Library to create and have some fun. That event is geared for kids 5 to 12 years old. For a look at all the events scheduled today at different public libraries around the Alamo City, just head to the KSAT Kids section of KSAT.com. We'll be back. A local nonprofit is working hard to make sure every kid has a chance for a normal summer. Tiffany Huerta shows us what Special Reach is doing to help kids who have developmental delays. Special Reach is a nonprofit that was founded in 2011. A team of educators, speech pathologists, and school counselors came together to figure out how to serve children with developmental delays and their families. Their kids are having those typical childhood experiences that they otherwise would have missed out on. Special Reach offers after school programs all year, but during the summer, they hold weekly camps for the kids to attend. At the camps, kids get to do all types of activities like horseback riding, rock climbing, arts and crafts, and swimming. This is just a fun traditional camp experience for children with severe, moderate, mild disabilities. It doesn't matter, you can, we, we accommodate you. While at the camps, instructors make sure to treat each kid like a celebrity. When kids arrive, camp counselors line up and cheer while welcoming the kids to their camp day. Special Reach works with other nonprofits across the city to host camps in different locations throughout the summer. We have families who follow us wherever we offer our services, and we have families who only access us when, they're in, when we're in the, their neighborhood. The cost of their camps depends on which program you pick. However, if a family is struggling financially, they still have the chance to get their child enrolled. We do not turn anyone away for financial reasons. Special Reach believes that every child deserves to be a kid, no matter what their circumstances are. Sometimes uh, we get super focused on uh, helping them heal, that we do not 
we tend to forget their kids and they need to have fun. You can learn more about Special Reach and how to enroll in their summer camp programs by heading to KSAT.com. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. I would love to hear that our rain chances have not just simply evaporated as we go into the weekend. Okay, I'll just leave. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> You're like, I could lie to you. Well, she has to be truthful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we got uh, lucky the last couple days. With we have. A few showers and mm -hmm. storms, uh, but that heat high is going to be moving directly overhead. You know what I was thinking the other day? There's been a lot of people who have moved to San Antonio from outside of the state. Uh, this is the way things are for us in the yeah. summer. Yeah. Now, now, it is a little hotter than usual mm -hmm. and more humid than usual, but... Yeah, we're in it for the long haul. And remember, we have mild winters, too, relatively speaking. <laughs> the joke that a lot of people are saying is Texas is preheating. Preheating? Pre yes. Pre oh, like an oven. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. I, I did want to start with the pollen count because yesterday we had high molds. Today, molds are down. They're moderate at 510. Pigweed is low. Here's a look at the weather setup. So you can see that there's a band of showers and storms across the panhandle down to Dallas-Fort Worth. This is the area that's going to have the chance for some scattered severe storms today. Amarillo, Lubbock. So if you've got friends and family across the panhandle know that they'll be under the gun for some severe weather. Isolated severe weather elsewhere from Angelo down, uh, Abilene rather, down to San Angelo, uh, down to Big Bend, and even parts of western Valverde County could see an isolated severe storm. Same story with Dallas, but generally that heat high, which has moved a little bit off to the west to allow for that rain yesterday. It's going to start moving overhead, moving east over Texas in the coming days. That's going to, as Mark said, evaporate our rain chances and allow for the heat to continue in a big way. Here's a look at afternoon temperature forecasts through the weekend and into early next week. We're going to be looking at highs up to 104. This is 10 degrees above average, so it is unusually hot for this time of year, but this is something that we see ourselves in often are these heat waves uh, frequently throughout the summer. Now the one glimmer uh, of a silver lining here is that as that heat high moves <laughs> overhead early next week and our temperatures jump up, we are going to see humidity come down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Afternoon dew points will be in the 50s, so it'll be a dry heat next week during the peak heat of the day rather than like this weekend, pretty humid. Uh, all right, a quick check of the tropics. I want to show you Tropical Storm Cindy. Tropical Storm Cindy is out to the uh, east of Tropical Storm Brett. Uh, Tropical Storm Cindy is expected to stay out into the Atlantic. Same story with Tropical Storm Storm Brett. It's a higher end tropical storm just below uh, the cusp of being a hurricane, but it is expected to run into some upper level wind shear, which causes uh, these storms to fall apart. And so what we'll see is Brett will head out uh, into uh, the parts of the Gulf of Mexico and end up just falling apart. Looking ahead to Cindy, uh, Cindy is going to again fall apart as well. So they're both entering some unfavorable atmosphere. Taking a look at the planning forecast for the uh, day today, Friday today will get up to 100 degrees. Saturday and Sunday, 101, 102. By Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, that's when heat will climb even more. We'll be up to 103 to 104 degrees. But again, a dry heat during the early part of next week. And last year, we had had 58 100 degree days all throughout the summer. So far this year, we've uh, had a lot less than that. So again, only five. So That is a good news, but it just felt like it hit us all at once after that nice May that we had. Absolutely, we had a good amount of rain in May. So at least we had that. That's true. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, ma'am. 949, 82 degrees. And healthcare education, among some of the most important qualities you may consider when deciding where to live. When we come back, we're going to tell you which cities were listed as the most livable and which ones were at the bottom of the list. And the clock ticking to file a claim for your share in a lawsuit with Google. When we come back, what the search engine is being accused of and the steps you need to take to get a piece of that settlement.
You still have a few weeks left to file a claim for a share of the class action settlement with Google. The search giant agreed to pay $23 million to settle a lawsuit dating back to 2013. The class action suit accused Google of violating user privacy. Google denied the allegations it shared user search terms with third-party websites and struck the settlement. Anyone who did a Google search between October 25th of 2006 and September 30th of 2013 is eligible to file a claim. That's so long as you actually Actually clicked on a link that turned up in the search results. To file, you can go to the settlement website. It's referheadersettlement.com. From there, you'll get a class member ID, which you'll need in order to file the claim. To opt into the settlement, you'll have to agree that you searched on Google and clicked on a link within the time frame. Then you'll be asked for your contact information. And you'll also be asked about how you would like payment through Venmo, PayPal, or a prepaid card. The payments aren't expected to be big and will be based partly on how many people actually file claims. You have until July 31st to submit a claim, and you can also submit a paper claim form by regular mail. That's as long as it is postmarked no later than July 31st. You hear about scams all the time, but this time scammers are targeting Amazon customers. Last year, fake order confirmation emails accounted for more than 50% of Amazon impersonation scams reported by customers. Coming up Monday on GMSA at 9, we'll be speaking with an expert to talk more about these scams being reported and what you should do if you get a suspicious message. A new Bud Light commercial released yesterday portrays the brand being enjoyed by people facing summer difficulties like sunburns and rainouts. Additional ads will feature partnerships with country singers and NFL players. It's all in an effort to boost sales after the company's recent LGBTQ plus controversy. Now, Bud Light is also giving away $10,000 a week to consumers. Well, Vienna, Austria is once again the world's most livable city. The Economist Intelligence Unit released its 2023 report ranking 173 cities around the world based on things like health care, education, stability, infrastructure and environment. Vienna was closely followed by Copenhagen, uh, also which is in Denmark. Also, Australia, Canada, Switzerland also have multiple top 10 cities, but no U.S. cities make the top 10 list. The highest ranking U.S. city was Honolulu, Hawaii, which came in at 25th. The three least livable cities are located in Algeria, Libya, and Syria. All righty, the weather today may make living in San Antonio a little difficult. We got up, we're going to get up to 100 degrees. By noon, we'll be at 90. By 1 p.m., 94, but it'll feel like 102. And then this afternoon, of course, peak heating, mostly sunny skies, 100 for the high, feeling like 109. We're going to still have a heat index value at 9 p.m. tonight of 100. And then looking ahead, cranking up the heat in the coming days, at least the humidity is going to come down early next week. Have either of you guys been to Vienna, Austria? Mm -mm. I have never been. It's probably one of the cleanest European cities I've ever been. And I went into a cathedral in Vienna, and they go, oh, by the way, Mozart got married here. Oh, that's it's so cool. It's still standing. That kind of history everywhere, but absolutely beautiful city. Oh, so no surprise that it made the top of the list. I'm not at all surprised. Live coverage beginning at noon on Victor Winbayama's arrival here in the Alamo City. Have a good weekend.